welcome to The Quiet Corner. This is a knitting and hand spinning podcast where I share about my love for all things fiber from my little corner of the world. Uh, my name is Vanessa and I'm coming to you from Ottawa, Canada. And other than on this channel, you can find me on Instagram as Sea Salt and Stone. So a huge uh, welcome to uh, new and returning viewers. I am, as always, um, so honored to have you here. And uh, yeah, just it's really good to be um, back in this chair podcasting again. I know it's been about four weeks, so uh, I missed you guys. And it'll be fun to just have an opportunity to chat about um, all the things I've been up to. The very first thing I want to do is actually to announce the giveaway winner. Um, so I announced a giveaway on my last episode. Um, <clears throat> And the giveaway is for this uh, beautiful skein of uh, Roots and Rain yarns. Um, but yeah, this skein um, is going to a lucky someone today. Um, as I said on the last episode, um, I planned to uh, draw a winner after three weeks. Uh, which I did, so I, I um, put uh, the number of comments I had last Saturday through a random number generator. At that point, uh, the um, random number generator selected uh, comment number three. May no longer be comment number three because I, I didn't lock the thread, but last Saturday it was comment number three uh, and that is Madeline Martins uh, so I'll put uh, the name below on the video yeah, so I'm I'm so um, happy for you Madeline I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly um, but if you could um, look down in in the down bar, I will have either my, you could use either my Instagram and private message me on Instagram, or you can use the uh, email for this channel, uh, which I will also have down below. Uh, it's really your preference. Uh, so yeah, you can reach out to me, Madeline, on Instagram or um, through the a gmail address down below and uh, just send me your address and um, I will hopefully be able to get this into to in the mail to you as soon as possible oh one thing I did forget to say um, I just really 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 enjoyed reading everyone's comments uh, on the last episode about what you are grateful for during this time. Um, honestly, if any of you out there are having a bad day, I would highly recommend just going down to the comments in the last episode and reading all of these things that um, people felt grateful for in the midst of challenges. Um, uh, it was just, it was really uplifting, um, really good for my soul. So thank you so much for sharing. We've had a, a really nice slow morning. Um, slow mornings, slow Saturday mornings are my absolute favorite time of the whole week. <laughs> uh, just waking up um, not too late, uh, but getting a good rest in and um, waking up to have a nice big breakfast together and um, I did a bit of spinning this morning and 
we enjoyed our, our tea time together uh, and now Dan is out for a walk and it's the perfect time for me to podcast. So I've got um, my second cup of tea for the day. Uh, it's um, kind of a mystery blend from my cupboard that I'm really enjoying right now, but it wasn't labeled. So, um, but I'm quite sure it's peppermint and maybe a bit of rose hip. Um, and there's also something slightly spicy in it. So I find it very refreshing, but also warming. Um, I've been drinking it all week. It's like my new favorite thing for an herbal tea. And I also have some uh, essential oils on this morning, of course. Um, this morning it's the Liquid Sunshine Blend. And this is from uh, Sage again. Um, I just thought it would be the perfect thing for this morning. Uh, it's nice and sunny out and this Sage Blend has uh, grapefruit, essential oils of grapefruit, uh, lime, and bergamot. It's very citrusy and kind of reminds me of summer. Um, so yeah, it's a nice, cheerful, refreshing blend. So I guess we can jump right into the knitting. Um, first off, finished objects. I only have one and I'm wearing it, as you could probably guess. Um, this is the Autumn League pullover uh, that uh, I've talked extensively about in previous episodes um, so I, I won't uh, I won't bore you with the details of it all over again <laughs> um, but maybe I hope you can see I would say the main detail that's important to see is the neckline anyhow um, but I'll see if I can give you a bit of a close-up so you can just see uh, the slip stitch detail turned out really nice and I am in love with this rolled collar um, you just uh, knit your uh, ribbing double the length that you normally would and then you fold it in on itself and tack it down to the inside and um, I just I feel like it the, the rolled collar gives such a like a nice finish to the sweater. I feel like there are many rolled collars in my future. <laughs> um, yeah, because I just, I love the way this has turned out. Um, the other detail I'll try to show you, I don't know if I can get it in the shot, but um, that's the split hem detail. Um, so basically I knit, and I'm sorry, this is like, I, I haven't, I've barely taken the sweater off. It's just so cozy. Um, so it's already looking worn <laughs> and probably has like bunny fur and hair all over it. But anyway, um, yeah, so I knit the body in the round and then I split just for the hem um, because the, pattern calls for a split hem and I really I really like the split hem effect um, yeah I I love the fabric it's so soft and cozy uh, but it's also a loose enough gauge that it's quite breathable so I'm finding that this is the perfect sweater for the spring weather that we're having right now because our house is still pretty cool which I love it wouldn't be warm enough to wear you know on its own outside right now but um, in the house it's perfect and under a jacket is perfect for right now uh, so I'm really really pleased with this um, and it's it was the main thing I was working on a couple of weeks ago uh, 
which is why I, I didn't um, finish any other objects. I just focused on, on the sweater. I wanted to cast it off so that I could really uh, turn my head to Dan's cardigan. Uh, so I think, I think that's almost everything I had to say about this. Um, the other thing which I've mentioned before is that the, the size range isn't incredibly inclusive and um, moving forward I would really like to, um, I would like to endorse um, as many size inclusive patterns as I can on this channel. Um, but this is one that I, I was just eyeing for quite some time. It was kind of on my knitting bucket list and, um, what else is there to say? Mm. I do love the oversized fit of it. I think that's part of what makes this such a cozy sweater and it, it really is like the perfect sweater to, you know, you could wear it with jeans, you could wear it with sweats, which is, you know, I've mostly been wearing um, pajamas and yoga pants. <laughs> um, so it's been, it's been the perfect kind of all around sweater. So yeah, this is the Autumn League pullover. So now uh, for works in progress. Where should I start? Works in progress. I just have the two works in progress, which you've seen before. Uh, like I said, I really focused on finishing the Autumn League pullover. Um, and so didn't get crazy far with my other whips. Um, but I will show you where I'm at. Uh, for my brother's socks, um, for my brother's socks, I am close to the heel. Uh, this is where I was on the last episode. So I'm close to the heel, and this has just been kind of casual knitting whenever we sit down to watch a show in the evening. Um, yeah, so I've made some progress on these. He has a US size 12 um, foot, so it's taking longer than my, my usual, um, like it, when I knit socks for myself and I'm like a size seven, so I think that factors into why these are taking a bit longer as well. Uh, but yeah, the, the these are knitting up in the West Yorkshire Spinners Signature 4-ply in their Peacock colorway. And I think it's super cute. It's a lot of fun. Uh, and I'm knitting them on my typical uh, Chiagu US size 1. 2.25 millimeter uh, with a 40 inch cable. Yeah. So that's that. The other Mondo work in progress that I have is the Mount Auburn cardigan. It's getting big, so it's getting harder to sh to reveal. <sighs> so here's where I am. Um, and this is the, uh, the body up to the arms. Uh, so I finished the the body up to the arms and have just started knitting uh, the, I guess this would be the left front. So if you can picture that this would go underneath and this is going to grow up toward 
uh, the shoulder, this piece here. So I ended up knitting the medium length for the body because I have a pretty good feeling that when I block this out, the, the fabric is going to um, stretch down quite a bit. Um, yeah, and I think blocking will really loosen up the cable work and will add a bit of length. And so I didn't want to knit the large length for the body and have it be too long. I don't want Dan to be kind of swimming in it. Um, so fingers crossed, I think I'm on track. Um, but yeah, so that's where I am with this. I am planning to put in quite a bit of work to the upper body over the next couple of weeks. I would like to finish the, the upper body in, in a few weeks time and um, finish up with the sleeves. It would be really nice to, to have this fully ready for him come next fall and um, I'm also itching to start on the jump on the summer knitting train. <laughs> Like the, all the summer tea patterns that are out there. So, um, yeah, I'm really trying to put a, give this a dedicated effort so that it's not on the needles forever because uh, it is a very slow project. So I knew going into it that it would be easy for me to lose steam, uh, but I also figure the more I get done on it, um, and the faster, the faster it will go, and then the less likely I will be to, you know, get super frustrated or bored with it. Um, and so far, I'm not frustrated or bored with it at all. So, I think, I think that's working well for me. Um, so I'm going to try not to cast on any other garments um, until this is at least at the sleeve stage. That's my plan, anyway. Um, what else can I tell you about this? Oh yeah, the other challenging factor with this project is it's, it's really not TV knitting. You know, I, I have to have three different cable charts out I need light, um, I need to be able to focus. Um, it's, it's not the kind of pattern that you can, that I have been able to, you know, memorize and just knit on without thinking. So that also makes it more challenging, I think, uh, is just to um, set aside time where you're you're not thinking about anything else. Certainly in terms of my knitting, I'm just trying to um, embrace the fact that I have some things on the needle and on the wheel that are longer term projects. Um, they're not necessarily, they're definitely not instant gratification. Um, and so I'm just trying to step into that and really enjoy the process and not um, because I do also often have this urge to, you know, I'm a, f I'm, I'm a finisher in a lot of ways. I, I love to finish all the projects I start and it's the, the end goal that often motivates me. Um, but lately I've just been kind of like trying to breathe and just be in the moment with, with what I'm working on and... Um, yeah, not feel this pressure to move on to the next thing. Um, so there's my knitting philosophy for you for the day. 
but those are my two um, knitting works in progress. Uh, in terms of stash acquisitions and plans, um, I have acquired a couple of things, but they're both, both of those acquisitions are technically spinning related. So I'll chat about that in the spinning segment. Um, but in terms of plans, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure that I'm sold on knitting the Rift Tee by Jack, Jacqueline Seaslack. Um, yeah, I think I just, I have to jump on that bank bandwagon. I'm often not one to follow trends. Like if everyone is knitting something, I, I'm funny that way. And I, I often don't feel like knitting the same thing that everyone is knitting. The same thing that everyone is knitting. Um, but with this one, it's just, it's the perfect basic tea pattern. Um, and I think the fact that it is size inclusive, it's got um, a lot of, uh, you have a lot of room to kind of personalize uh, and tailor the pattern to your, your body um, shape and your preferences. And I love the idea of having that pattern kind of in my uh, knitting toolkit because um, it's it's also something I could see myself knitting multiples of and just trying it out in you know different um, different yarns uh, different uh, fibers you know for the summer you could have a rift tea in cotton linen or cotton wool blend um, but then for the fall and spring, um, you could, you know, I could knit one up with hand spun, for example, um, uh, and use a 100% um, wool yarn. So I kind of, yeah, I've, I've been dreaming about the Rift Tea a lot, and I think it's going to be my next go-to. So like I said, once the Mount Auburn cardigan is at least at the sleeves, I'm hoping to cast on uh, the Rift T. Um, and I've, I've been looking at a few different um, summer yarns. Uh, I've considered, there's a beautiful uh, blend from Juniper Moon Farms, which is a cotton linen, I believe. Um, there's also, from my local yarn shop, the other ones I've looked at online have been the Queensland. Um, Queensland has a cotton wool blend and I'm thinking that might be my first go-to is a cotton wool blend and then my local yarn shop also recently put out this posted this new summer yarn that is 95% uh, recycled cotton and I was so excited to see that yarn i can't remember the name of it i think it was no i'm not gonna try i'll just post it down below uh, but it was a 95 percent recycled cotton and i i've been looking for a recycled cotton yarn because um cotton actually does have some pretty significant impacts on the environment um if it's organic it's better um, but the one thing about cotton is it, uh, 
it requires so much water to grow um, that it really isn't a sustainable option on its own. Um, things like hemp and lin linen are, um, in my opinion, a far more sustainable option. Um, so, you know, I've been keeping my eye out for recycled cotton for ages that um, uh, would be a good choice for uh, summer knitting. And yeah, so I might also uh, consider trying that yarn out as well, if not for the for this rift tee, then likely for a future pattern. So um, those are just my thoughts on on future plans for uh, summer knitting. I'm also dreaming of uh, a lot of sock knitting. Um, over the summer months. Um, what else? I, I'm really itching to knit with my hand spun again, um, but I'm focusing on the current projects I have on the needles, so. Yeah, that's a little bit of my, my fiber dreaming for you. Right. I think it's time to chat about spinning. All right, so spinning FOs. Um, as, as you may know from previous episodes, I've been um, on a very experimental journey with uh, 100 grams of Rambouillet rustic roving rustic Canadian roving or roping. Um, it really has been probably the most ex like most experimental project in the sense that every step of the process has been experimental, um, not just one. So first I experimented with hand dyeing it, the fiber. Um, then as I started to spin it up, I tried to use my default short forward draw, but because it was um, such a rustic and such a, a rustic wool and a quite uh, neppy wool, uh, and also because it was a carded preparation, um, it really didn't want to be spun short forward draw. So that was another lesson learned for me. Um, so I ended up spinning the singles um, with a long draw. And uh, I've only spun long draw a handful of times in my short spinning career so far. Um, so it was really good practice. Uh, and I am not at all consistent in my long draw spinning, um, so it, it really um, has been an experiment in terms of how this yarn would actually turn out. <laughs> um, so anyhow, yes, I experimented with the dyeing process, experimented with the, the spinning process, and then I experimented with the plying process. So I'm going to show you uh, the, the finished skein. Um, I'm not sure if this is the best lighting. So, there's a lot going on here. Um, as you can probably tell, the original colors that you could see more distinctly when I dyed up the patches of fiber. Um, originally I had uh, the hibiscus, which was a very light, 
kind of pinky purple. Um, the avocado pit, which was a barely there peach um, tone, but mostly like a, a white. And then I had another batch that was dyed with uh, black tea. So it kind of had this caramel color. Um, what I did was I spun the singles long draw and then I uh, plied up two bobbins of two ply. And at that point, yes. there was a lot of barber pulling, which looked really lovely. But what I, what I could see was that there was a significant amount of variation, thick and thin, um, like really, really varied anywhere from fingering weight to um, occasionally like a more worsted weight, again, because of the experimental long draw. So then I got thinking, um, if I wanted to kind of preserve some of that color variation with the barber pulling, I could leave it as a two-ply and I could have more yardage and that could lend itself to one type of project quite well. Um, but then I thought I've always wanted to try a cabled yarn and a cabled yarn would give me a much more consistent yarn because it's, um, it's a way to do a four ply. Um, and the way that you do that is, um, so basically if you have um, two bobbins of two ply, and let's say that they've been plied in a counterclockwise direction, which mine had, then I can ply those two bobbins of yarn together in the opposite direction again, so in a clockwise direction. So I spun my singles clockwise, I spun the two ply counterclockwise, and then I spun the two two plies together clockwise. My goodness, I hope I got that right for you. Anyway, um, so I decided to go for the cable ply to get a more consistent yarn. It's so, so freaking soft. <laughs> um, it's so soft. And I thought, I can't pass up the idea of knitting something for a baby with this. I feel like I could knit you know, a hat and mitts, um, or maybe just a hat, depending on the size. Uh, and I'm glad that I, I went for the cable ply to um, just give me a bit more consistency so that, you know, if I do two mittens, they're gonna come out the same size or close to the same size. Um, so I went for consistency rather than kind of color, um, color preservation. And that's why uh, the final product is, it has a very heathered look to me. So all of the original kind of colors that you could see more clearly before are um, quite blended and and so it just has a tonal effect to it now um but i actually think that i almost prefer it uh, because i'm not much of a pink person and uh, the pink from the hibiscus was much more prominent before and now now it's kind of just this creamy fluffy cloud Anyway, um, yeah, so as you can see, originally, this was the, the two-ply that I was going for, and that was with a 
short forward draw, uh, but I just couldn't handle um, picking the naps out constantly. Um, and I discovered that with the long draw, uh, it allowed so much air to remain in the singles that they didn't look uh, quite as neppy or inconsistent. And I just decided to go with that. Um, so it, instead in my spinning journal, I put um, a sample of the cable ply here, uh, just because this is what I actually ended up with. I didn't follow this at all. Yeah, I spun long draw in a 10 to one ratio for the singles. Uh, the finished weight was only 87 grams, I imagine because I had to pick out a lot of nappy bits, um, especially in the beginning when I was trying to spin short forward draw. Um, so I think I lost some fiber that way, for sure. Um, and the wraps per inch is about eight, so that makes it a, uh, a fairly bulky weight. Um, so I'm estimating that this is probably about 80 to 90 yards have a, it's definitely worsted to bulky weight um, in, in places. So uh, yeah, I think it'll be the perfect amount to make like a little baby hat or baby mitts. Um, we'll see, but I'm excited. I'm really excited to knit with this. Um, and see the, the final, final stage of the process. Um, probably the knitting will be the least experimental of this entire journey. <laughs> uh, so that's my only finished object for spinning. Um, in terms of works in progress, I have two. And I'll, I'll talk about um, the first one, uh, I acquired some new fiber for, so I'll chat about that first. Uh, so I purchased, um, I think it was 200 grams of, uh, Jameson and Smith, uh, Shetland combed top. Um, and this is in the fawn colorway. So, sorry, not colorway, the natural fawn color. It's undyed. Um, I have a little bump here to show you. <laughs> it is just so delightful. Um, so light, so soft. And this was available online through my local yarn shop, which I was really excited to see. Um, and my idea with this is to try to spin a sock yarn without nylon, without silk, without mohair. <laughs> um, I know lots of people have experimented with um, hand spinning and knitting socks um, that are just pure wool. And there are so many mixed reviews out there about it. In the end, I just felt like I had done so much research that I just had to try this option for myself first and then if it really doesn't produce a durable um, sock fabric for me then I will move on to to try new things so as you can see you can probably tell that I on this channel talk about a lot of 
experimentation. Um, it's probably also, partly it's my, my personality, but partly um, it's also because I'm a beginner spinner, so I'm trying all the things and I, yeah, I en enjoy experimenting that way. So anyhow, uh, I thought that Shetland, um, that I would try it in a three ply sock yarn, three ply fingering to sock weight. Uh, because it's not a super fine, it's a medium fine wool. And so I thought that would lend itself to a bit more strength. Uh, but in my research, um, the other factors that are supposedly really important and helpful to knitting a durable sock without nylon in it. Um, it also has a lot to do with your ply structure. Um, and one thing that I've heard quite consistently is that uh, knitting on it with a tight gauge is what will give you a stronger fabric as well. So my thinking is um, that I'll spin this up into uh, three ply uh, and then uh, knit it on a fairly tight gauge, tighter than I normally would. And so that's why I also went ahead and purchased um, some new sock knitting needles uh, they're Chiagus as well, the same as the ones I usually use for uh, two at a time magic loop, but these are a US uh, size zero, two millimeter. Uh, so just a bit smaller. You can see that they're very teeny weeny. Um, so that's my plan and I will I will um, certainly let you know and, and keep you posted as this project progresses. Um, and I plan on doing a lot more experimentation with um, natural, natural hand spun sock yarn. For this project, I have started on the first bobbin. The first bobbin is almost done. I have two more to go. So these are my lace weight singles. I love the way that the singles are, are turning out. I love the, the natural vari variegation, um, just how naturally tonal this fiber is. It's so beautiful. I love, I love this fawn color. Um, so I'm spinning this comb top using a short forward draw. Um, I'm spinning the lace weight singles uh, on a 10 to 1 ratio. I haven't calculated my turns per inch. Um, I don't tend to do that. I just, I usually tend to just go by the feel and kind of um, how my plyback test is looking, um, how quickly my single is curling up on itself. And that's kind of how I gauge if I'm putting too much twist or just enough. So for these, um, my method has basically been to put a little more twist uh, so that the single isn't lying completely flat, um, but not I'm not over twisting because uh, I don't want to end up with a ropey yarn at the same time. The other method that I'm trying to coach myself to do, and this is something that uh, Rachel Smith has talked about on her Woolen Spinning podcast 
quite a bit. Um, she talked about how when you're first learning to spin, your uh, tendency, at least in my, this is true in my case, your tendency is to want to press really hard on the single and squeeze all the air out with short for your short forward draw. Um, that is once you've drafted and you're um, smoothing the yarn down that your tendency is to want to compress really hard. And I, for whatever reason, that is kind of my default is to want to press quite hard on the single. So with these, I'm trying to put just enough extra twist because I know I'm gonna lose a bit when I ply. Uh, but then to keep my singles soft and um, with a bit of air left in them by just gently um, smoothing on the way back after I've drafted. So that's kind of my, my method in a nutshell. I'm gonna let you know how it goes. Um, uh, but here is just a little sample of the, what my singles are looking like here and what the three ply is that I'm aiming for down here. Um, and the, the three ply that I'm aiming for is um, somewhere between a sport and a fingering weight. Uh, so yeah, that's where I'm at with that, with this project and Again, going back to the theme of embracing slow, this is kind of the project that originally got me into that mindset um, because sometimes I want to charge ahead and just kind of plow through a project to get it done and have the excitement of, you know, finishing something or in this case, I'm like, I can hardly wait to cast this on for a pair of socks um, but uh, because it's a three ply and it's lace weight I it's gonna take me a while um, it feels like it's taking forever and um, I find that the more that I just acknowledge that and acknowledge that I'm in this project for the long haul um, longer haul the more I enjoy the process and so yeah I'm so excited about this uh, the other interesting thing spinning this fiber hasn't felt natural to me yet I find that it is something with the Shetland um, maybe because there there are guard hairs in the Shetland wool. I don't know what it is, but it has a bit more slip to it. Uh, and I'm most used to spinning things like Corydale and Merino, um, which uh, for me, um, there's just been more of a stickiness to the wool. And so it hasn't been as much of a challenge um, as this has to spin thin. Um, I don't know if anyone else has had this experience with Shetland and it could just be because of what I'm used to. If you have any tips for spinning Shetland, please, um, I would love to hear about your experiences. The other interesting thing I've found with Shetland, um, and I, th I think this is because it has um, a lot of variation in the lengths of the fibers. Um, at least that's what I've read is that Shetland will also ha often have um, different staple lengths in the same fleece. Um, and in this case, some of the staple lengths are quite short and some are longer. Uh, but anyhow, for whatever reason, I'm finding that I have to keep my drafting triangle very small to keep my lace weight singles consistent. And if I, 
you know, veer away from that little inch of a drafting triangle, I end up with this, yeah, I just end up with a much more inconsistent single. Um, so I'd be interested to know if any of you out there have um, experienced that with Shetland. Um, let me know maybe your favorite way to spin Shetland. I, I would love to hear um, from your experience and, and your knowledge on that. Uh, okay, and finally, um, something I just decided to do, uh, I think it was a couple of, couple of days ago now. was to have a second spinning project on the wheel um, just uh, because I'm going to be prioritizing the sock yarn, the Shetland sock yarn, but uh, I wanted to just have something started as a second project um, just in case I get to, you know, bobbin two and three of the sock yarn and I need like a little palette cleanser or just a break from the the Shetland. So uh, what I did was I started spinning up the Rolex that I showed you on the, my very first episode. Um, let me see here, it's a bit of a mess. But these are the Rolex, I think, that I showed you on my very first episode. Yeah. I think. Yes. <laughs> um, so I started spinning these up. These are a blend of uh, a mystery merino fiber that I have a ton of in grey. And then um, Ashford Corydale. And I really like the blend. Uh, so I started spinning these up. I have enough for um, potentially for a very small garment if I can get enough yardage out of the fiber. Um, if not, it might just be a shawl or we'll see. Uh, but anyway, so that's been exciting just to have um, have this as an option for whenever I need a little palette cleanse and then I can go back to my uh, sock yarn. And I'm, so I'm spinning these from a roll like preparation uh, using short forward draw um, on a, my 10 to one ratio. Uh, my singles are sport to fingering and I'm aiming for a kind of a heavy DK. DK. There's probably going to be a bit of variation because um, I want this to be more of a mindless project. I don't want to be checking, you know, constantly how I'm doing with my singles like I am with the sock yarn so that this will be a bit of a break for me um, <clears throat> from the kind of very technical spinning. Um, but yeah, this is what the singles and then the ply, the, the singles are looking like, and then the ply, ply back test that I'm aiming for. Uh, once again, I haven't done any official sampling. Maybe someday I will get serious about sampling, <laughs> but no guarantees. Um, I did also originally, I, um, tried these roll eggs out spinning long draw and that turned out quite nice as well. I'll show you. Um, so these were the long draw singles and then the long draw two ply. Um... And actually it's beautiful. It's, it's so fluffy and airy and, and light. 
Um, but I, in the end, um, I wanted to go with my default, a bit more of a comfort zone spin. <laughs> and so that's what I'm going for. And I think for me, I, I also, this is my, my favorite look is a applied yarn that still has some definition to the ply. Um, I do think woolen spinning is, is beautiful. Um, and I, I do enjoy knitting with woolen spun yarn. Oh, I have fluffies on my nose. Um, but there's just something about that bit of definition that you get, um, with a bit more smoothing of the yarn of the single. And um, for right now, anyway, that's the look that kind of has my heart <laughs> with my hand spun. So I'll show you the tiny bit of singles that I do have on the bobbin. It's not much. <laughs> that's that on my end I guess in terms of a little bit of chatter um, it, the past couple of weeks have been a bit more stressful um, for me um, I've just found uh, work has actually been um, somewhat demanding uh, but we also our bunny Bo was sick for about a week straight, um, starting on the Easter weekend. And so what was supposed to be kind of an extra restful weekend was actually quite stressful for me because I was so worried about him. Um, and luckily I'm happy to report that um, we got him in to see the vet. Our vets are incredible. Um, they did some x-rays, figured out uh, that he was going through a, a bout of gastrointestinal stasis. So it's quite common and also quite dangerous for rabbits because they stop eating on their own. And in Bo's case, he stopped eating on his own. So I was having to force feed him every meal. And it was, yeah, just not pleasant. Um, but the vets prescribed um, the best medication there is or one of the most highly recommended medications and within about three days on that medication he was eating and um, you know hopping around exploring he's completely back to his normal self now and he still has a few days left on that medication so um, a huge thank you to everyone who um, responded when I shared that on Instagram. Thank you for your um, your thoughts and prayers and well wishes for him. He is doing much better. Uh, so yeah, we're really I'm I'm feeling a lot lighter because of that. Um, but otherwise, yeah, we're just embracing the the slow, quiet life right now. I hope you've uh, enjoyed this time. Uh, I wish you a very makeful month before I see you again. Um, and yeah, comment down below. I would love to hear about uh, what you've been working on and uh, please feel free to head on over to my Instagram if you um, want to keep in touch. Uh, before then. So, all my love. Bye.